our reserves are always hitting roadblocks. And we kind of talked about it a little bit, why? Um, but once that year is passed, now the burden is on the veteran to prove whether or not their condition is possibly related to military service. So the language, the language, the language, I always express to our vets, we have to understand the language. The burden is on the VA to prove the facts. They get your service medical record to see if you actually were treated for it in service. That's facts. Then they set you up for an examination to see if the condition still exists. That's facts. Then they determine whether or not you have a medical opinion as to whether or not your condition could be. See, the burden is on us to prove the possibility. Could be, possibly, related to military service. Once we've proven that part, whether or not our conditions are possibly related to military service, now we have a claim. Now the rest is on the VA to process that claim. And part of their duty to assist us is affording us a thorough exam. And a lot of our retirees that are coming out, they say, wait a minute, I gotta have another exam, I have one in the military. Well, that's DOD exam. The VA, what we have to do is we have to educate our vets that one, there's two elements that we have to provide to the VA before we file any claim with them. One, are you being treated for the condition today? And you will hear vets say, well, you know, it happened in service, it happened in service. And that's not the debate. The debate is, are you being treated for the, for the condition today? And two, do you have a doctor relating your condition today to military service, possibly to military service? And that's all we need. Now for increases, the other thing for increases is you gotta know what the law says. For example, I'm gonna use something as small as diabetes. Diabetes. Let's think about this disease. Diabetes gets so severe you start getting amputations or you require the use of insulin. Well, we got vets who are only on oral hypoglycemic, which is just a pill. And VA law states just oral hypoglycemia is just 20%. And they'll come into the VA and say, well, I feel my condition is worse than that. But you're only on pills. The law states in order to get 20, you only have to be on pills. In order to get 40, you have to be on insulin. You have to be on insulin. So with 20%, if you're on pills with restricted diet, you should be you should be 20%. If you're on insulin with restricted diet and regulation of activities, you should be 40. And a lot of folks don't know that. Then they start saying, well, Mac, I got this numbness in my arm and I think my diabetes is worse. I should get more than 20. Well, they don't understand, that's a different disability. Yeah. <laughs> diabetes is diabetes. Now when you start getting numbness tingling in the hands and the feet, you have to see a neurologist to determine if you have peripheral neuropathy. Yes, sir. I have diabetes and peripheral neuropathy, but uh, I don't think I got it in the military, so that Well, doesn't... the reason why I brought up diabetes, our Vietnam veterans, there's a list of conditions that Congress have already stated. If you were a Vietnam vet, served in country of Vietnam, it is possible you may have been exposed to Asian Orange. And because of that, it is presumed that you may have diabetes, prostate cancer, hepatitis, and a list of other conditions. The rest of us, the rest of us, after Vietnam, you had to have been treated for the condition while on active duty. You had to have been treated for it. If you were not treated for it, what are you claiming? How is it related to military service? Is the question you want to ask. Uh, where would I go to find out a list of maladies that might be Agent Orange related? VA Medical Center. Online. 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 VA Thank Medical Center, if, if you have a Vietnam veteran, take them to the Asian Orange Clinic at a VA Medical Center. Every VA Medical Center has an Asian Orange Clinic. Or a vet center. The purpose, excuse me? Or a vet center too. Or a vet center. Keep them away from vet centers, no. <laughs> or a vet center. <laughs> but the purpose of it is, they have a pamphlet that they will give you that will list the entire conditions associated with Agent Orange. The other one are Gulf War veterans, OIF. People don't understand, even those serving today, this is considered Gulf War. It started in 1990. And it's still going on today. Until the president says the war is over, whether you OIF, OEF, uh, Endure, whatever it may have been, it's still Gulf War. So at the VA Medical Center, there's a Gulf War registry. Register. Because as time go on, as years go on, anytime there's a change in law or legislation about Gulf War syndrome, you'll never know unless you register. Because when there's a change, they have to mail you what that change were because you may have the condition. So if you don't register, you're not gonna get it. You won't know. 
or you need to be part of an organization who disseminate that information. Anytime there's a change in legislation or law, the service organizations will notify you and tell you what those changes are. Um, we have any retirees in here? Active military retirees. Two things. If you actually served in combat, make sure you file for post-traumatic stress disorder. If you actually serve, if, if when you look on your DD-214, you see Vietnam Service Medal or Southwest Asian Medal, you are considered a combat veteran. Whether you're a cook, a shoe, whatever. If you have a Vietnam Service Medal or a Southwest Asian Medal, if you're a Gulf War vet, you are considered a combat veteran. Register for both Asian Orange or Gulf War Syndrome. You have to register. So you know the list of conditions, and if you suffer from any of those conditions, all you have to provide the VA is what a diagnosis. The rest is up to them. You're saying, hey, I served in the Gulf. The other thing is post-traumatic stress disorder. I always educate vets on PTSD because those of us that served in combat, nine out of 10 of us suffer with PTSD and don't even know it. Don't even know it. We've taken the symptoms and, and, and adopted them as part of our personality. So if you look at the symptoms associated with post-traumatic stress disorder, some of us will look at it and just ignore it and say, nah, that's not me. I don't get crazy behind the wheel and do the road rage. But most of us who actually served in combat suffer with PTSD and don't even know it. And we've adopted the symptoms as just part of our personality. So you have to understand the condition itself. If you actually served in combat, the, the key is prior to 2010, July 2010, prior to that, the law stated in order to file a claim for PTSD, you had to provide the VA with the diagnosis. And you had to provide the VA with the verifiable story that they can go back and verify that actually took place. Well, in July 2010, President Obama alleviated us from all of that. President Obama said no longer does a veteran have to prove they have PTSD, nor do they have to prove that they actually served in combat. They don't have to tell the verifiable story anymore. All we have to do now is tell the, vet, the VA, I'm a combat vet, and I was fearful for my life. So unless you're from DC, you were fearful for your life. And I usually tell that joke in DC. <laughs> okay.